Hi, and welcome to BPI TV. I'm Dan Stanton. I'm joined today by Dr. Michael Sokolov, who is the COO of DataHow. Now, Michael, um, DataHow is a spin out from um, ETH Zurich, that's right? Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. And yes, that's correct. So it's a spin out which was established in 2017 after many years of uh, industrial collaborations. We're after we felt ready to go commercial because we thought we had something new to show, something new to implement. And uh, since 2017, we started to agglomerate um, different sorts of customers, on the one hand in the biopharmaceutical world, on the other hand in the chemical world, because as a background, all of us are either chemical engineers and biotechnologists, and our, let's say, vision is that we do not have to forget our, our uh, background in the classical engineering disciplines when moving towards those um, big data and digitalization goals. So um, what, what exactly does DataHow offer the bioprocessing space? So basically we start based on the rigorous knowledge with, which is already there. So basically biopharma is a very, let's say, conservative industry. And conservative isn't, isn't bad per se, it's just based on a huge amount of knowledge which has been built up through many decades and therefore um, we believe that this knowledge must be still central. However, if we see at all of the other industries where big data and digitalization is kicking in very rapidly and there's many, many tools which are developed, of course we would like to benefit from those tools. But unlike many others, our vision is that we have to build those digital tools centralized on the knowledge which we have already. So we remain engineers, we remain experts, but everything which is too tough for us to explain, everything which um, where the process is faster than our understanding or it's absolutely non-intuitive what is going on, this is where we have to use big data and digitalization to improve, become quicker, become more efficient and avoid any sort of risks and failures which we especially face in production. I mean, the term big data itself has been uh, thrown around, uh, not just the biopharma industry, but um, all industries for a while. How, has, uh, how have uh, bioprocessing firms um, taken this on board? How are they trying to use big data? I think you're fully right. It's, it's, a, it's a big buzzword. But uh, my first hypothesis is that in bioprocessing, data is not big. If we compare like, or if you look at the size of one experiment, that's in the kilobyte range. If you look at like many experiments done, we'll move to megabytes, or after maybe if we have online data, we go towards gigabytes. And if we have like many years of the development of a process and then we go towards production, this is when we are at terabytes. If we compare that to the automotive and we look at Williams, like the, the Formula One team, they have agglomerated 300 terabytes per race. This is much more than, you know, one pharma company in many years for one certain process. And like your genome is 200 gigabytes and the data usage which you have per month on the phone is again in the gigabyte range. And this all we do not have in bioprocessing. However, our data is complex. So if we look at the training of data scientists, they're usually trained on huge data because we have in the social media, in the financial sector, very often this huge data stacks available. For us, the data is really small and it's very complex. And it would be a pity of not starting with the knowledge which we have and to build um, um, digitalization tools up on that. So that's basically one comparison. And on the other hand, how digital are we already? So um, I had once the privilege to visit Volkswagen and their uh, production space. So they have a automation degree of 98.5%. And then if we think at the autonomously driving cars, well, and compare that to the automation degree, which we have in the production plants, in the R&D and bioprocessing, I mean, this is not a comparison. So still, I believe we can do much better. So, so in many ways, um, when uh, this con when at this conference people are talking about big data, um, really they should be talking about the complexity of the data exactly. rather than the size. Exactly, big being complex, being big being difficult, and not being just the size of the megabytes or whatever. Exactly. In your experience, are industry professionals realizing this nuance? 
I think those who ver- who have ever worked on the data are um, indeed aware of the fact that how much you spend on a single experiment, so how much each of those kilobytes is worth in terms of costs which you invest into the process development. However, those who might you know rather see the general potential of this digitalization might not you know trace it back accurately to you know what one can do about all the data and how the data looks like however i fully agree that the general idea to become more digital to integrate all sorts of quantitative tools to guide the decision taking of the process engineering teams is highly important for us and michael you're presenting later today on yeah. um, the on big data and decision making yeah. um, to increase the stability and uh, efficiency in the upstream process um, what, what solutions are actually out there for companies at the moment? So um, there are already several, um, let's say, basic solutions out, which are in partially already GP compliant. This is hugely important. We need tools where the regulatory authorities are fine with for them to being used to guide our decision taking, because eventually we have to file those tools and we have to show how our decision taking was done and this must be transparent. However, I believe that um, those tools are not efficiently good to support the decision taking throughout the screening towards production. So there is tools which we could use at different stages, but none of them is really tailored to the sorts of problems and the sort of data which we are facing in biotechnology and pharma, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Therefore, I believe we need more tailored tools which are really supportive of the classical problems we are facing. However, they must be still generic enough that we can use them when we screen a process and the data is very, um, is very it's a very large veracity, loads of noise. Later on, we have more and more stable systems, so we move away from the high throughput devices and we go towards larger scale, where we have very little data, but it's very stable data, and then we can do our interpretations on top of that. So I think we have to have a toolbox which aligns with the complexity which we are facing and especially aligns with the sorts of decisions which we have to take throughout the process development and later on in production. So who, who's going to really drive um, the innovation in that space? Is it going to be demand from the end users or uh, are it going to be companies like yourself? I believe that the digital challenge is too big to be, to be solved by one single company and there will be never a single algorithm or a single software which can face or which can solve the entire problem entirely. I think the, our, or our, our two credos in that sense are we have to go for um, the integration of our knowledge. This, this is the first thing. And secondly, we have to find a smart way to, to find allies and to have smart collaborations because there is a, um, a very interesting landscape of companies with different competences. Companies offering sensors, companies offering software algorithms, and companies integrating actually all, um, all the data into a centralized space. And I think each of those companies should actually focus on the, the, um, the competence they have. We will form smart collaborations and then we will show to the actual end users what is possible. And I think this, this will be driven by successful implementation stories, both in R&D and production, so that more and more proof of concepts will be established so that um, all this uh, will not appear you know, that much of a black box and rather something which is as, as intuitive to do as we are facing problems right now with the classical engineering mindset. So I think we have to change our mindset towards the digital tools without forgetting who we are, like being engineers and biotechnologists. You, um, you mentioned before um, that the industry is um, fairly conservative. Um, is that gonna hold um, the, the biopharma space back from implementing some of these new tools and solutions? Well, as said, I believe this will come as, as soon as we have successful stories to tell, especially successful stories which clearly show also the, the economical drivers. So how much can we reduce the costs? How much can we reduce the risks? How much can we, you know, um, focus on the actual process development rather, and, rather than just, um, you know, managing failures? I think with that success stories, this conservative um, 
this conservative stage will somehow, you know, move away. It will always be there because it's a, regula a regulated environment. It's uh, an environment which is highly based on the infrastructure you have. So you, you have to find new equipment, you have to embed new software solutions into the um, processing systems. But I think with all that, um, it's possible. It will go step by step. There won't be, you know, a huge change over from, you know, uh, a car which is driving with, uh, with gasoline to all cars driving uh, autonomously. The same we will face here. Maybe slower, but I think not less successful. So I guess, as you're saying, um, you, we just need one or two companies to break through and uh, exactly. innovate in this space exactly. for the others to follow. Yeah? Think about continuous manufacturing. Again, everyone was doing batch and fat batch processes several decades ago and now also in our industry after many other industries showed that continuous is actually the way to go. Um, we're, we're seeing many case studies, both in the upstream and the downstream processing, that things are becoming more and more continuous. And I think the same will happen with uh, data-driven and quantitative tools, which will be more and more applied and more and more standardized. Because, of course, we cannot have one solution for one company and an absolutely different co solution for another one. So we have to come up with something which is, uh, which is working fairly well for uh, a large landscape of different needs. However, um, of course, we will have uh, some sort of customization which is required. And I think the basis to start with um, generic principles of the cells, of the um, separation columns, which, you know, which are very similar across the entire industry landscape, if we embed that as the central part of the solution and then use big data on top of that, then I think we, we're moving towards this rather generic tool. And uh, Michael, I guess my final question um, relates to uh, the regulators. Is there any, has there been any guidance or has there been any encouragement from uh, the FDA or the EMA to, for companies to um, embrace big data or embrace tools to um, digitalize um, their data? Well, I can speak only for my impression of what I heard from them, but it's, uh, it's not their full, full opinion. I believe that if we embed quantitative tools into our decision taking, we can clearly rely on something and we can clearly explain something which is very transparent. We can say that we have that solution which is predicting that to happen, therefore we're taking that as a decision. And if we follow that so solution, our decision taking can be very, very clearly explained. Nonetheless, we must prove that the decisions which we are taking and the models which we are trusting are, um, are robust. In the sense that if the process changes slightly, that all of our decision taking would, would, would be hugely different. So we must prove that the tools which we are having are robust and um, we can confidently take decisions based on them. And if this robustness is proven, and there's different experimental possibilities to show that, I believe that, or I would wonder why such tools would not be uh, very beneficial to show transparency and to explain how the process development and how the production facilities are actually working. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. For BPI TV, I'm Dan Stanton.